Hi there, I'm Linda and this is Hutton's Valley Permaculture. With changing weather patterns, we need to be investigating ways to make our gardens more resilient. In today's video, we take a look at what I'm doing to help my garden survive drier times. I live in South Gippsland, Victoria, Australia and get about 1200 mil of rain on average a year. Most of that comes in winter and spring with summers often being very dry and the dry times can stretch into autumn. I'm on tank water only, so I'm very mindful of using this water to water the gardens in those dry times. So I need to build my garden so that those rains are captured and stored by the soil for the drier, hotter conditions during the growing season. Wicking beds are a great way to drought-proof raised garden beds, and I've used them in a suburban home where nearby tree root systems stole all the water and made in-ground gardening more difficult. They worked fantastically. Here I don't have that issue and prefer to have in-ground beds rather than the raised beds and the reason for that is so that I can utilise the contour of the slope in the area in which I've built my garden. By building on contour I'm making paths with wood chips. As the water moves down the slope it is slowed by these water sinks. When enough rain falls and the garden is soaked to capacity the excess will just move down the slope and leave at the bottom. If I had more a grid style garden, I don't think it would be as successful at slowing the water. The biggest thing to focus on when building your garden is getting enough organic material in place. And that includes the bed itself and also the paths. The reason for this is that the organic material on the surface absorbs the, the rain as it falls or flows through the system. Not only that, it prevents evaporation from the soil surface in both the path and also in the garden bed. So let's have a look at the garden a little bit more closely. I have paths, then garden beds, and then some more paths. Now the main thing to focus on, I believe now, is to get the organic matter really deep on both the paths and the garden beds. While the growing mostly happens here, the roots can stretch out into the paths to access both nutrients and moisture. Now, just as important as its water conserving and holding functions, the organic material is also an important source of food for the soil food web. Supporting the soil food web is critical for a healthy, happy and easily growing garden. The soil food web feeds and protects the growing plants, but it also improves soil structure. With a rich soil food web, the soil structure is optimal, which means its water holding capacity is increased. An intact soil food web means the moisture will be retained in the soil at times of no rain for up to a period of three months, meaning your plants will survive with little to no additional water. It's important to have a no-dig gardening style to maintain this structure. Having a deep organic layer on top means you're less likely to disturb the soil structure when removing vegetables especially the root crops. Now that might be pretty hard to achieve in the early days while you're still building your no-dig beds and getting all of that organic matter on top. Um, so for the carrots here, I do still dig them, even though I am working to increase that layer so that they will just pull out of the compost layer and leave the soil undisturbed. As we improve the soil food web and increase the organic layer on top through mulching, composting and wood chipping, we also increase the percent of organic material in the soil itself. And this also increases the soil's water holding capacity. So how do we go about getting enough organic material in place? Well, I do build compost and move this material to the garden beds when it's ready. When building garden beds, I do prefer to buy some mushroom compost in because it's a quick, easy way to get those garden beds established. I also get in loads of wood chips, which I build my paths with. In the early days of improving soil, this seemed to break down quite quickly, so it often needs to be topped up. What I have been noticing is that I've got a lot more organic material around the place than I have time, space and energy to build composts. Recently I saw a Hugh Richards video on building compost in your pathways, and I thought that's the solution I'm looking for. We have two problems, the ever depleting wood chip layer on my paths and the ever increasing organic material supply from my garden and surrounds. So the solution will fix both of these problems. So what I have been doing after seeing that uh, video by Hugh 
is starting to build compost in all my pathways. So I do gather up my organic material and it might just be right in the garden bed next to it. Chop that down, put it in here, layer it up with the different materials and finally add the wood chip layer on top. So it uses up this excess organic material and also reduces the amount of wood chips that I use. I do buy that in, so it is something that I have to get into the property and pay money for. So if I can reduce my uh, use of that, that's a win. And it also just quickly recycles all of this material really close by. So in this path here, I have laid down cow manure and sawdust and different greens that I've cut down from the garden. I have started a video to show its progress over the year. And finally on top is of course the wood chip. Now in a year's time, I expect to be able to just remove the wood chip layer and underneath will be organic material that is composted down by the worms and the soil organisms. And I'll be able to just move it into the garden beds next door and then start the process again by rebuilding the paths. So the materials that I've got around the place are both the chicken and duck bedding. I've got plenty of grass clippings, shredded branches and leaves, deciduous leaves, manures, sawdusts, lots of free uh, materials. And then to finish off, you just top it with the wood chips. Once the system kicks in and I'm harvesting compost from the garden paths, I can just put it directly onto the garden beds. I'll also add from my compost bins, but it means I don't have to buy any compost in and I'll be self-sufficient for compost going into the future. My focus is to add as much organic material to this space as possible. I believe that it will create a more resilient garden that will require less additional water during dry times as the years go by and the soil improves. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video and good luck with your gardening. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now.